In this video, we're going to talk about adding optional information to your inventory spreadsheet. Specifically, we're going to discuss the optional columns not covered in the last video. If you have not yet watched the video about the essential columns, please do so before watching this one. Before you can enter information into the optional columns of your spreadsheet, you need to download and open it. If you haven't already done so, download the spreadsheet by logging into Clover.com, selecting the Inventory app, and then choosing the Export Inventory button in the upper right corner. That will trigger a download of the spreadsheet with your latest inventory information in it. Open that spreadsheet, and let's take a look at the rest of the columns. In the first video, we already talked about the essential columns like name, price, price type, price unit, and tax rates. Now we're going to address the rest of these columns. These columns are optional, but can benefit your business depending on your business needs. The first column you'll see is the one labeled Clover ID. You never need to do anything to this column because the system will put information here for you. Leave it blank when entering new items and Clover will generate an ID number for each item once it's entered into the system. And once Clover has generated an ID, there's no need to change it or delete it from the spreadsheet. The next optional column is labeled Alternate Name. If you have a product or service that is known by two different names, you could list the second name here. For example, if our Sunrise Special was also known as a Three Egg Breakfast, we could list Three Egg Breakfast here. The original name of Sunrise Special will still be the name of the item for sale when you run a sale, but the alternate name of Three Egg Breakfast will also show up next to that item. The next optional column is the Cost column. This is where you would enter the cost you pay for the item, which is also known as the cost of goods sold. For example, the price to our customers for the Sunrise Special could be $5.25, but our cost for that item is $1.50. Listing cost amounts for your items helps you to easily calculate profits. The next optional column is the product code column. This is where you would put the 12 digit UPC or universal product code for that item. It's the number that typically accompanies a barcode and makes a product easy for merchants and vendors to identify. If you want to, you can add the number here by hand or you could scan the barcode of the item later directly from your Clover device. The next optional column is the SKU column. A SKU is typically an alphanumeric code used within a business to identify a product. If you use SKU numbers in your business, you could type them in here. The next optional column is labeled modifier groups. This column works hand in hand with the tab at the bottom with the same name and is used to identify additional specifications for a given item that can come with an additional cost. For example, our Sunrise Special comes with three eggs, but how do we know what kind of eggs? We create a modifier group that lists all the ways the eggs could be prepared. That way, at the register, when someone orders the Sunrise Special, it can prompt a pop-up that asks how the customer would like their eggs prepared. To create this modifier group, go into the Modifier Groups tab at the bottom, where you'll see four columns at the top. We'll start by naming the group and typing that name here under Modifier Name. We'll type Egg Types as the name of our group. The next column asks if we'd like the modifier to pop up automatically. Since we need to know the type of eggs at the register, we will type Yes. Under the third column, labeled Modifier, is where we actually write out our modifier options, one option per row within this column. So for our egg types, we'll go ahead and list out scrambled, hard-boiled, fried, poached, over easy, sunny side up, and Benedict. And then we'll throw in an additional add cheese option for those who love cheese. Next is the price column, where we add the price of each of these options. Since we don't plan to charge extra for the way the egg is cooked, we'll just go ahead and type zero next to all of these egg options, and then say that extra cheese will cost an additional 50 cents. Now, whenever a customer orders the Sunrise Special, a pop-up will appear on the Clover Register and ask how they'd like their eggs and allow them to also add extra cheese if they'd like. That's the whole modifier tab. We now have one modifier group. Let's say we also want to give customers the option to add extra items to their Sunrise Special. We can create another modifier group in the Modifier Groups tab exactly the same way. 
we can start on the very next blank row and label our group extras. We'll say yes on the pop-up automatically column so it will trigger our cashier to ask for the upsell. And then we'll list out our modifiers and prices in the next two columns. Toast for a dollar, hash browns for a dollar fifty, grits for a dollar, fruit for two dollars, a croissant for a dollar fifty, and an English muffin for a dollar. Now let's go back to the main items tab and see how all this works with the modifier groups column. Since we know we want to add these modifiers to our Sunrise Special, we find that row, and in the Modifier Groups column, we type the name of the first modifier group we created, which in this case was called Egg Types. We've now connected the information from the Modifier Groups tab directly to the Sunrise Special inventory item. But we also want to add the second modifier. So we move to the next blank row and type the name of our second modifier group called Extras. If the next row on your spreadsheet is not blank, you'll want to insert a blank row first by right-clicking on the gray row number below the Sunrise Special and selecting Insert. That should give you a blank row to add your modifier, which in this case will be the only thing on this entire row. That's how you enter modifiers. The next optional column is the Quantity column. This is where you would type the number of items you have on hand. Then, as you sell items, your stock count will automatically update in the system. If you don't have a stock number, you can leave it blank. The next optional column is the Labels column. Basically, creating labels allows you to further categorize your inventory items so you can run more customized reports based on your business needs. For example, if you want to run reports on products grouped by vendor, or maybe you want to run a report only on items from a given vendor, you could use the Label column to write vendor names for each product. Or for our restaurant, maybe we want to group our items by what is food and what is a beverage, so we can later run reports on just food items or just beverage items. In that case, we would type food or beverage next to each item in the Labels column. If you can't think of a specific use for the Labels column, you can always leave it blank and come back to it later. The next optional column is the Hidden column. If you have an item that you want to be listed in your inventory, but you don't want it to show up in the register and be available for purchase for the time being, you use the Hidden column. For example, this column can work well for seasonal items. For our restaurant, let's say we offer a special peppermint hot chocolate during the holiday season. Instead of entering it into our inventory every holiday season and then deleting it after the holidays, we can just hide it so it's not available for purchase during non-holiday months. Specifically, this column speaks in computer language, so if we have our peppermint hot chocolate item on the spreadsheet and we want to hide it, we type TRUE in all caps in this column. In other words, it's asking us a true or false question. If we'd like to hide this item from our register, and we are answering true or yes, we would like it hidden. Then when the holiday months are here, we can go back into our inventory and change true to false, which indicates that we no longer want this item hidden. Leaving this column blank means the system will assume you do not want the item hidden from the register. You can also easily change whether an item is hidden or not in your Clover device or from the online dashboard. The final optional column is labeled Non-Revenue Item and is another true or false column. This column is really only used when you want to track items or products that have a cost associated with them but don't generate revenue, basically only for reporting or tracking purposes. For example, if you give away free food samples and you want to keep track of the cost of the samples you give away by selecting them at the register each time you offer them, you might list the free samples and their associated cost in your inventory as non-revenue items. Then you would type true in this column. But truth be told, most people don't use this column on the spreadsheet at all. And if they do label items as non-revenue generating, they usually just do it from the Clover device itself. So, in a nutshell, most people leave this column blank. That is all of the optional columns available on the Inventory and Service Tracking Spreadsheet. Just as we discussed in the previous video, once you complete your spreadsheet, you'll need to upload it back into your Clover Web Dashboard. You do this by saving the spreadsheet to your computer, logging into your Clover Dashboard, selecting the Inventory app, and clicking the Import Inventory button in the upper right corner. 
From there, you select Choose File and navigate to the saved location of your spreadsheet on your computer, and then select Import from Excel. Again, it's important to note that because computers are very particular, the spreadsheet will only be recognized if the rows and columns are filled out exactly the way we've explained. That means if you typed a word in lowercase letters that should have been in all caps, or if any required information is missing, or if the header names were altered, your web dashboard may tell you to make specific corrections to the spreadsheet, and then you can save and upload it again. That's it. You can now edit, add, or delete any items in your inventory from the web dashboard, your Clover device, or by downloading and changing the spreadsheet again. Enjoy working with your new inventory and service tracking system.